Responsibilities Percy the small engine had been shunting in the yards at Tidmouth for the bigger engines. He had to sleep at Tidmouth's sheds that night and returned to Thomas's branch the following day. Gordon, James, and Henry were there too. James and Henry had dozed off, but Gordon was still awake. Evening, little Percy. Glad to have you in our sheds again. You, Thomas, and Toby are running that branch line efficiently, Gordon said grandly. Oh, thank you, Gordon, yawned Percy, even though he wasn't sure what efficiently meant. Running a railway to time is a big responsibility. Surely these days you have more responsibilities, Gordon pondered. I shunt and pull the mail train these days, Percy replied. Ah, but my responsibilities are much grander. I have to pull the express and keep everything to time, you know. Next morning, Gordon had steam up before the other engines. Percy had to fill up with water, so Gordon kindly pushed him to the water column. Thank you for helping, Gordon, puffed Percy. Not at all, Percy. We've got to keep this railway running smoothly. Responsibilities, my dear Percy. Responsibilities! Percy had filled up with water and was ready to move off. Gordon, on the other hand, didn't return to the shed. He decided to have a doze in the sunshine while he waited for his turn. Percy began to leave the yard to find his trucks. Gordon tried to follow along, but to his alarm, he couldn't. Come on, Gordon, said the driver. We haven't got all day. I can't move, groaned Gordon. I've got cramps. Percy's driver came over to see what the matter was, and both crews discovered that Gordon's cylinders had jammed solid. While the fireman went to find an engine inspector, Percy pushed Gordon back to the shed. James was then told to take the express in Gordon's place. Responsibilities, Gordon? The only thing you're responsible for is why the express was late. Ha 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 ha! Chortled James. Percy didn't say anything. He felt it wise enough to slide off to work. Terence turns pot hunter. Near Hackenbeck Station, there is a small farm with a field out front that is fenced by the railway line. This is where a cheerful Terence the tractor plows. Every day, up and down, you will see Terence happily chug along. You'll often see the branch line engines puffing along. He'll give a friendly smile of a greeting and continue his work. Opposite his field was another. Recently, men were digging in that field. And lorries and cars would rumble by and park there. They're archaeologists, Terence, said Farmer Finney. Archie, uh, what you call it? Terence bumbled. They're diggers who dig up very old and important items, like fossils or old pottery, Farmer Finney finished. Terence was confused. I might be a good archaeologist. I dig up a lot of the ground with my plow, don't I? <laughs> Maybe one day, lad said Farmer Finney, and the two carried on with the plow. Thomas would often pass where the archaeologists were working. Then he would come across Terence's field. Every day he would see Terence examining the ground around him. What are you doing? Thomas would say as he passed by. I'm trying to be an archaeologo-whatever, Terence would call back. For days.
days and days, he tried to find something, but all he found was mud. The archaeologists weren't having much luck either. They hadn't found a single thing they were looking for. But it says it's here on the map, one said to another. While this was going on, Terence chugged sadly around his field. Suddenly, there was a crack beneath his plow. Farmer Finney jumped down to have a look. What was it? called Terence. Was it another rock? No, replied Farmer Finney. It looks like a pot. A pot? pondered Terence. Well, chuck it in a bush and let's be on our way. But the archaeologist heard the commotion and walked over to see what was the matter. There were a lot of delighted gasps and scurrying of tools. Terence was bemused. The next day, a smartly dressed man came to speak with him outside his shed. This is the curator of the Tidmouth Museum, said Farmer Finney. Indeed, said the curator. I am delighted to tell you, Terence, that you unearthed what we were looking for. It appears that the archaeologists took an outdated map and were digging in the wrong field. So I did become an archie... Uh, archie... Uh, a, a pot hunter, Terence cheered. You should do that more often, Terence. You'd make a good pot hunter. On your guard. Bill and Ben, the China Clay Twins, were settling into the shed for the night. Be on your guard tonight, boys, said the drivers. There are thieves about. What does on your guard mean? pondered Bill. I don't want to be on my guard. That might hurt him, whimpered Ben. You don't have a guard, silly, snorted Bill. Anyway, last time we were given a warning, you disobeyed it. Remember? Coughs and sneezels spread diseases. But that was Boko in the end, Ben retorted. Settle down and go to sleep, you two, said the driver and shut the shed doors. The shed was dark now. The twins quivered. What if those thieves try to break in? Bill said. They won't, said Ben. The shed door is... He got no further as the shed door creaked open. The rusty old lock had broke and the door swung in the breeze. Suddenly, the twins heard footsteps. In the darkness, they could make the shape of two men, one tall and the other rather small. In here, Fred, said one. Too blooming dark to see anything. Find a light switch, said the other. Their voices echoed round the shed. Bill and Ben dared say nothing. The men made their way to the back of the shed and began tinkering with tools. They're taking the workmen's tools, whispered Ben. What do we do? The shed was dusty from cleaning the twin smoke boxes. Bill's nose wrinkled and shuddered. He let out a quiet little sneeze. Achoo! The men jumped. Flashlights clicked on and rapidly searched the shed. No one's there, said one, and they continued taking tools and equipment. Ben suddenly had an idea. What are you doing in my shed? He said in a low, monotone voice. Oh, you said there was no one there, one of the men snapped. They made their way to the front of the shed. Bill piped in. Ah, what you got in those bags? He quizzed. Again, flashlights clicked on and searched the shed. This time, however, they caught a glimpse of Bill. <laughs> screamed the men, and they bolted out of the shed. The next morning, the driver found the door wide open. What happened here last night? he asked. Oh, not much, said Bill. Just being on our guard.
Jack in the Box. The station at the end of the line was busy and bustling. Trains come and go round the clock. James backed down onto his train one morning and was eager to set off. He looked around the station at the busy passengers and trains pulling in and out. He noticed a large wooden crate on the platform. I wonder what's in that, he said. But two porters and the guard came and took it to the guard's van. What's wrong, James, said Edward. You look puzzled. Nothing, Edward. Just thinking to myself, James replied. Soon everyone was ready to go when a late passenger dropped his parcels. The driver and fireman got down to help and soon ran back to the cab ready to go. James jolted the train out of the station. A loud thud was heard in one of the coaches, but no one seemed to notice. James pulled the train along the main line. When they reached the first station, some passengers got off and some more got in. James waited impatiently for the guard's whistle, but heard nothing. The driver looked back and couldn't see the guard. What are you still doing here? Be on your way now, said the station master. But we haven't heard the guard's whistle yet, replied the driver. Your signal's down, so be on your way now, said the station master. And James was soon off. opened the doors to find the guard wasn't there. Only the large wooden crate James saw at the station. With a loud bang, the lid to the crate flew open, and inside was a very red and frustrated guard. What are you doing in there? said the fireman. James started so quickly that I lost my footing. I fell in the box and got locked inside. I've been banging on the lid since we started, fumed the guard. Well, the way you're going, you look just like a jack-in-the-box, laughed the driver. 